<laughs> All right, welcome. Um, my name is Conrad, and I will talk a little bit about data hike and how we got there and what we are doing right now. Um, I will talk a little bit about myself and what we are doing. Um, then I will go through a small motivation about why we did it. Um, it's similar to what Henrik said. Um, then I will just say for, for um, those of you who don't know what, what a triple store is or how Atomic works, I will a little bit say something about a, a triple store. Um, then I will talk about um, the query language on, on, on our side, um, data lock. And then I will come to data hike, its core functionalities and how it works. And there I will do some live coding. You can see how how you can uh, work with it, and um, yeah, that's the, the rough outline. Um, all right. May, may I ask, do, do you uh, publish the slides later on? Yes, of course. Thanks. So um, we are doing everything, so what we're doing is um, we're doing everything open source, so of course the, the slides will be somewhere. I will, I will post a link, I will write an article about it, and then you can find it. Um, you will also find the, the example codes on, on GitLab. About, um, about me, I'm German, I'm from Heidelberg, um, beautiful city. Um, I'm working with Clojure since 2012. I started with it at university, writing some research papers, and yeah, I really liked it. And um, I worked with a good friend of mine, with Christian Walbach, um, and together we developed open source libraries, and um, we founded um, a company last year because we, we worked well together and we said okay now let's let's do this um, as a business and um, yeah we did some open source contributions um, we created some uh, closure libraries in for, for IO for storage some key value store we created um, some replication system but that wasn't really successful and um, Christian worked on Anglican, which is a probabilistic programming language. It's also written in Clojure. Um, yeah, and now we continue working um, next year, I guess. And um, so the, the overall motivation for us to do all this stuff is um, we worked with Datomic and it was really nice working with that. We, we did client work and um, yeah. It was it was it was really nice working with it, and um, also working with data log. Um, in contrast to SQL, I, I did SQL before that. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's nice. And also, um, Christian is doing his PhD now in Canada, and he's in the in the academic um, research sector. And he said, okay, um, there's there's a lot going on in the programming language world or in the research world. So there's there's um, a lot a lot of interest in in data log. So they are doing, for instance, static code analysis using data log, and I didn't know that. And um, so we will continue using that. Um, but the problem with the atomic we had, the same with Henrik, um, it's closed source. I can't add anything. Oh, I can't can't, can't look in it, and um, I can't extend or, or change it as I I liked. Um, yeah, so that's our base motivation. Um, now we'll go to a little bit background. I will talk a little bit about the, what a triple store is. So um, triple store is just a database that stores and retrieves three part segments. Um, their entity, attribute and value. And a value is either a primitive data type, like a string or an integer, and, or a reference to another segment. And you only store these three elements, some parts also some metadata, but, but this, 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 this is the core idea. And you retrieve the, the data again with the query language. Um, yeah, Datomic is in, in the closure world, one of the examples for a triple store. Um, it's, a, it's a transactional immutable distributed database, um, but with commercial licensing. Um, it stores the database of, as facts. Um, it's developed by Rich Hickey, 
and it was the motivation for Clojure. So he developed Clojure in order to build a database that wasn't there yet. And um, he had he had built it with, with interdependent um, components. So you have one transactor that's only responsible to transact data into the database and that's it. So no query engine. So the query is a separate system and also the storage is separate and also the console and the client. And um, it implements a, a flavor of data log um, with query and pull syntax. And also it has many persistent protocols. You, so you have cloud layers, for instance, or you have relational database, anything um, you like. Um, the other uh, popular triple store in the closure world is a uh, data script. It's, it's a in-memory open source data mm -hmm. implementation. Um, it's uh, cross-platform, so you can use it in closure script and in closure. It's very mature. It has a, fast, a faster in-memory query engine than Datomic. So I did, when, when I first uh, started working on data hike, I did some performance tests just for simple queries and transactions. And then I checked it against um, a data script and it was really faster because uh, it uses a, a, a really nice um, index. And it also supports a lot of uh, the Tomix data log flavor. So you have the, you have the uh, pull syntax, you have the queries. It, not, not everything is there, but there are some small differences. And um, it also it only supports um, partial schema support, uh, only partial schema functionality, um, which means you can you can um, define some some parts of the schema. For instance, the cardinality, or index, or references as value types. Um, but the rest is you can just add anything you want. So it's called schema on read. Um, yeah, and uh, now we, now I will a little bit talk about data log. So data log is um, the query language for triple store. It's a declarative logic programming language. It's a subset of Prolog. It's based on first order logic. It's not Turing complete, so you can't have a recursion. You have uh, implicit joins, and in the end, it's just a list of predicates of clauses you want to have. Um, and here is a comparison between these two. Um, here you can see just the SQL. So we want to find um, the ID of uh, Alice. So in SQL it would be something like select IDs for members, where we have a members table and where the name is Alice. And the data log equivalent is find ID where and the, the triplet of, of the triple store, um, the entity, the attribute, and the value. And um, we get a result set from that. Um, yeah, so I will show you some basic queries. So for instance, uh, oh, first we will have to add the facts. And as we are a triple store, every fact or every, every data entry is just a, a triplet. Um, so we add here six, uh, six facts. And a basic query would be, okay, let's find, let's find the person, um, or let's find the AD whose age is 45. So it's just a basic query. Um, you can have unifications. So let's say we, we want to have the name of the person who has the age 45. Um, then you have just a union of these two clauses. You have the clause for the age and you have the clause for the name. Um, the next query, you can query anything, uh, or you can have, have blank spaces in there, so you get everything um, that's available. So here we want to find all names in, in our database. Um, this is done this way. Um, this is similar gen than in, 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 in Datomic. Um, also, you can have different inputs. So if you have, I don't know, several databases, or you have any arguments, you can uh, have them as input. So in this case, we have the database, which is uh, this dollar sign, and um, a name as an input. In this case, we have the, our database and Alice as input, and 
with both, both clauses from before. So here we are searching for, again, for the name um, in the database and we want to get the age of this person. Um, and also we can have um, different uh, result specs, uh, sets. So we can say, okay, we want only um, the first value that pops up in the, through the clause. So if, you, if we have the dot and we say, okay, find um, where, um, we get, we get the first value there. Um, we also can get just a vector. So before, if you look here, you, if, you, if you're uh, just searching like that, you get um, a set of, of uh, vectors. And um, if, you, if you use um, this operator, you can get a, just, a, just a vector of the values. And um, also you can uh, get tuples. Um, like that. So you, here in this case you get the first uh, tuple that's, that matches um, all the clauses. Um, yeah. And also we, we have uh, another syntax in there, the, the pull syntax, which describes, um, which, which describes the data we want to retrieve. So you can define the, um, the attributes we want to have in a, in a result hash map. So in this case, we want to pull from the entity um, the name and the edge. And in this case, the, if you look at the, at the data, um, we have name and edge, and we, will, we want to have that as, an, as a hash map, and we want to work with that. We can do that with the, with the pull syntax. Any questions so far? OK. Um, yeah. And this. Basically, this is this is the rough syntax we have in in, in data hike, and uh, we support most parts of Datomic's flavor. And um, yeah, so data hike itself, it's we we started working on it, or we started um, building it on, uh, around Christmas 2017, um, where we where we uh, got to know um, the hitchhiker tree. And we worked with DataScript at that point, and we said, "Okay, um, let's. We, we want to have a, a durable, um, a durable um, data log database. So with persistent layer, um, you could do that in DataScript when you just um, just serialized your your data. Uh, but it was it, for us, it was messy, and we wanted to have something, something, um, yeah, something more reliable like a Postgres or or LevelDB or Redis." Um, so we forked DataScript and we had worked on the hitchhiker tree because we, we, we created, as I said before, we created an open source library for a key value store and this was integrated in the hitchhiker tree. So basically when, so the hitchhiker tree is, a, is an index structure, which is, it's a, which is a um, combination of a B plus tree and an event log. Um, I can send you a link how, how this, this looks like um, in detail, or I think I, I, have, I have the link here somewhere. It, 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 would, um, it would take too long to explain it. Um, yes, please. In short terms, you said that this is some kind of tree index with the event block, so it's like index and history, right? What does the event block? Um, it's, so you have an event log in the, in the nodes in the trees. Yes, you have the B plus tree, and in the in the nodes you have an event log in in each node. Yeah, so we we, we built a persistent layer for for the hitchhiker tree um, because we wanted to use it, and um, yeah, then we 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 merged the two projects um, because uh, DataScript uses a persistent sorted set as an index structure, and he has a very good protocol how to interact with the index. And we just implemented all these functions that were there. So we replaced the index that was used in, in, the, in DataScript with the hitchhiker tree and its uh, persistent layer we implemented before that. And then we had data hike. Um, it wasn't that much. It was just some, I don't know, 100 lines of code or so. And then we had a fully durable database that worked. Yeah, we, we didn't do much. Um, so. Um, yeah, we only had that. 
and um, yeah, and over the last years and this year we we continued working on it. And I, up until that, we didn't know really how DataScript works because it was, it's a huge database. It's around four thousand or so lines of code, and I don't know everything. So we had to work into it. We had to get into that. Oh, I forgot. Um, um, yeah. So basically, what we wanted to do, or what what our overall philosophy for the, for this project was, is we wanted something open source, so everybody can work on it and everybody can contribute to it. Because we ourselves are only two developers, and yeah, time is scarce. Um, we wanted something with data log, um, and we wanted to be composable. That means we wanted to to have different. We wanted to have everything that's that could be a component um, separated and with a protocol, and you can just exchange it. You can just say, okay, I don't like the, the the query engine. I have a better one. I've written a better one, and then just use another engine if I like to. Or I have written another storage layer. Yeah, I, for instance, in 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 um, data hike, we have um, just for uh, storage protocols. Uh, storage layers, so we have in-memory, uh, file-based, um, level DB, and Postgres. And if you say, okay, I've, I don't know Cassandra, and I want to have that in there, you can just exchange that. You can just write your your protocols for for Cassandra DB, and then just add it there. So it's it's its own component, and um, yeah, so that's composable and extensible. And also, we want to have it really configurable. Um, so you can say in the beginning, I want to have um, no history. I don't want to have a schema. I, I want to have this and that. And this is this is now possible. Um, so um, the current the current architecture of data hike looks like oh, I'm too fast. <laughs> I'm too fast. I forgot the features. So um, what do we have right now? So we have the data log engine from from uh, from DataScript. I extended it a little bit, so I added some functions for for dates and so on. Um, we have um, two indices, so we have the persistent set for our index and the hitchhiker tree. Um, the persistent set is used when when we when you use data hike in memory. Um, then persistent set um, is faster than anything else. Um, we have a, a flexible schema, so you can have schema on read, which which means you can transact anything in there, and it's in there. And we have now um, on write capabilities, so data is validated if you transact it there. Um, we have, as I said, we have different storage um, solutions, um, and also we have the um, we have the capability of of audits. So. Um, Yes, please. Yeah, question about the uh, on write schema. You said that now it's validated. Is it validated against a fixed set of types or against arbitrary predicates? No, it's it's fixed fixed set of types. Right now, it's it's the types of uh, Datomic, almost all types. So tuples are not there, and I think some byte types are not there. Um, but it, this also should be extensible. Um, so we will create a protocol for that. So this is planned. Um, yeah. So um, data hack is also auditable, so you have time travel. You can see the whole history of data, even if you retract something. And you can get the um, database at a certain point in time. So um, this is now there. And also, we want to, we are, right now we are community friendly, I guess, I hope so. Um, and so people are using it, or people are extending it. Um, we have we have some contributions. So, for instance, the the storage layer was was I myself didn't implement it. It's, it was some guy from from GitHub. He said, "Okay, I, I did it. So I have here some protocols I implemented for the the things you you asked for, and here's the pull request, and that's it. And now now we have we have the the storage layer, and this is pretty cool. And um, yeah, since since my my release post on Friday, someone implemented a storage for S3. So, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I like it. 
And um, yeah, we want to, to have some, some more protocols for other stuff. So for the query engine, for instance, we want to have this also pluggable and, and some other stuff. So, but this is, this, is, this is coming, maybe the next talk, maybe next year. Or so. Um, so how does it look like? Um, really quick. Um, can you see? Yeah. Um, we have somewhere, we have our API. So this is our core namespace. Um, you can you will use from from your con, uh, from your application, um, and it yeah it goes to or it calls functions from the connector which is the, the mutable database connection and which also connects to the to the persistent layer. Um, then we have the the query engine which has a data log parser and which joins the predicates and or it it uses the database search um, on the on, on our index. And which then joins the predicates in there. So, this is this is the whole query engine. It's really really big namespace. I I haven't looked through all of it, so I hadn't the time. But I, I roughly know how it works. Um, and then we have we have the database um, itself. So it's the core record, the the core value with functions around it. Um, it does the the transactions into the index, and uh, which then persists. And it also does all the, the search, and um, it works with the um, with the uh, three core indices we have. So our index is um, our index is sorted three ways. Either we are sorted like um, entity attribute value in this order, or we are sorted like attribute entity value. Or if you say, okay, we want to index our attribute or the value, then we have attribute value entity. And based, based on, on, on your search pattern, um, we will access one, one, of these three, one of these three indices. Yes, please. T, is it for time or? Uh, uh, no, T is for uh, the transaction ID. Oh, I guess. So of course, yeah. with each transaction, you have a, you have a ID. And um, the 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 um, the temporal component is done with a with a meta entity um, added with every every transaction. Yes, please. Where does the hitchhiker tree lives in this? Um, the index is the hitchhiker tree. The index, okay. Yeah, the index is the hitchhiker tree, or the persistent set. Yeah, and um, yeah, I will I will I think I will I have I have a slide for how how the how the data flow is and, and how the data looks like. And um, also, since we, we now have a, um, a temporal um, component, we just mirrored um, the three indices. Uh, so we have a temporal EAVT and a temporal. So we have all together, we have six, six indices if you're using the temporal index. So, um, yeah. And the store is, is really underneath. So this is, this is the layer, the persistent layer. So this could be Postgres, this could be in memory, which is just an atom, um, or level EB. I think we have some Redis variant somewhere. Um, yeah. All right. So how does a transaction um, look like? So let's say we want to add um, Alice um, t uh, with the age 42. So you just call the function and this is your data. Um, what the database does is just some, some validation. So it checks whether, so if you have, if you have a schema on uh, right approach, it checks up whether it's the, the correct, uh, the correct um, value type, um, whether the, it, it collides with some index we have already um, something like that and creates datums. And these datums are then stored in, in the index. So um, as you can see, um, the, this, this data here, um, this is one, so you would guess this is one, one, one uh, entity. Um, these are basically two entities. So um, yeah, so the name is one entity and the age is one entity and this is also um, also stored like that in this store. So we have the EA, the entity attribute value triple um, in our database. And that's, um, as I had the, the questions about crux, um, the difference is um, crux would, you, uh, would store the whole, the whole um, data and not um, the triple. 
could you just uh, comment on how uh, retractions are uh, the flow for retracting uh, uh, entities? Is it? Um, I have a the low level uh, representation for. Um. So re the retraction works like that. So if you would transact something like that, and um, the DB would know, okay, this is a function. So you have something like I will. I will show you on the code. Is, is okay. that okay? Okay. All right. I will show you. The, so basically, what happens is it, the the transaction will say, okay, this is a, a um, this is a function, and then it would um, retract it from the from from one of the three indices, so EAVT and so on, and then it would transact it in the temporal index if you do retract, and then it is the the data is not anymore in the in the in the core three indices you can you can query. So it's in the history. It's in the temporal index. But you can query it. Um, but you can't um, query, you can query the if you query the history you can exit, uh, access it but for the for the default DB value you can't see it anymore if you retract if you really want to remove the data you, you have to use um, the DB purge function and then it's it's completely removed from all indices okay um, and now we'll show you a query flow how it works so if you if you have something like this as a query, um, what the data log parser will do, it will um, it will try to, to create um, matching matching entities uh, or entities that, that should be matched in, in our index. Yeah. So here we have these these two as, as our classes, and the query engine um, has to create something that could be matched. So in this case. Um, we have uh, the, the entity is unknown here. We want to find it. So internally, um, the comparator needs something like nil. And you have to create the, the whole, the whole um, entity, entity attribute value and transaction ID um, to be matched. And these are these two, um, these two entities. And for both of them, there, there will be a search. And the, the matching clause here is um, this below. It's only one in there. And um, you get, you get the, the value from the index. So here we want to find E and A, uh, so the uh, entity ID and the age. And the DB only knows, only knows entities. So it doesn't know anything smaller than that. That's, that's done by the query engine. The query engine selects the um, entity and the, uh, the, the age from from the returned uh, entities down here. So it knows you want to know this one and uh, oh, I think I forgot something there. Ah, I forgot something there. There is a mistake. Um, so this should be two entries here. There should be yeah, I did a mistake. So there should be two entries here. There should be something. Yeah, the age. Something like this should be returned here. Yeah, I think I've, I copied something wrong. Um, but this would be returned, and um, the query engine would select um, the appropriate um, age. And this is basically how the query so roughly works. So there's some magic in there. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, but um, that's, that's how the query works. And um, now let's code something. <laughs> um, I created I created um, an example repo. So I created so it's the same. I think we use this application now three times or so in meetup talks, and um, it's an invoicing use case where we create invoices as PDFs. And um, yeah, now we have a schema for that um, which we didn't have last time. Um, the repo you can find in the in the link. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, all right. I will I will go quickly through it. So basically, what what I'm doing here is um, I have to define the schema. So we are using the schema on on write approach. So the schema has to be there unless so. You can't you can't um, transact anything 
um, in there unless you have a schema. So I have to define everything. So I defined customers, tasks, and so on. Um, and I create the database with, I have some, I have, I have added some options just to, to add some initial transactions like the schema. Uh, before that, I, I had to create the database and then transact it and um, yeah. And then I connect to it and I add my first uh, customers. And here's an example query. Let me see. Um, where I just retrieve all my clients and we have our little shop and the Funky Hub started. And uh, yeah, it's in there. And yeah, it's some, some helper functions that's not refer uh, relevant. And um, let's, let's add our first um, offer with tasks. So I have, I have um, some offer names, some task groups, uh, let's create, a, create an, an online market with, with a database and a login. And um, oh, here you can see um, the first error. So I added some, some, some more error handling to, uh, to data hikes. So you can see what, what happens here. I wanted to transact something that's, uh, that's not defined in the schema. So customer offers is not there. And um, yeah, now you know what's wrong. And I will, I will, you know, I will add that now. So customers offers as a reference and so on. And now it's possible. And now we have our first uh, for uh, our first offer and tasks in there. And I will store the current date for later. And let's see. Okay, we have one offer in there. Um, this is the, the dot, dot operator I, I mentioned before. Um, let's do something like the pull. Yeah, so here I will, I will pull everything um, from this uh, task group. Oh, can you see that? Yeah. And you can see here, um, this is not a nested pull. So you can see here, we have the, the tasks in there are referenced. So you can see only the DB ID. And you can, you can have nested pulls. Ah, I did it down there. <laughs> okay, and let's see how it looks like if you transact something that's not there in the schema. So again, bad entity. Let's say okay, uh, the effort was in in uh, in long, and we want we try to transact something like that's a string, and oh, I added some some explanation what what went wrong here. So the, the entity um, 23 is a string is, isn't correct and it must conform to Java Lang Long. So you can always see what wrong data you added or you tried to add. And um, as you can see, um, I implemented the, um, the validation with closure spec. Um, so you can extend it with any spec you, you like in the future. Um, yeah, let's do the pull again. Now we have again this pull syntax with the um, with the uh, reference, and oh, this is a little bit long. Um, I think I will have to. Uh, it's it's really really long. Um, yeah, if we want to, if you want to have nested pulls, um, so if you want to have all the nested data you have, and I have many references here as an example, uh, you can do that. And if you do that, you get, oh, uh, let's do it this way. Hmm. Let's do it this way. You have really the whole nest, the, the whole data you want to have. You have the customer and then you have its, uh, the, the offers and you have the tasks and so on and so forth. And you can have everything in there in, with, with just, just one pull. You have to, don't have to do any joins anything else it's just one pull and um, yes please uh, do you implement the entity api uh yeah we have we have entity yes yeah so i didn't implement it it's, it was it was in data script so this is still so the core api uh, many parts of the data script api is still supported um but 
the Core API is only supported or primarily supported with the uh, persistent set. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't need this. So this is everything just for, for, for the templating uh, library we are using to create um, the PDFs for the offers or the invoices. Um, I will just have to add all of them. And then, yeah, that's, it's, this, is, this is not relevant for this talk. Um, yeah. Let's see how this looks like in the end. So how, how does it look like when we say, okay, a customer, the, the project for customers is, is done, let's invoice him. And um, first I will get um, the, the customer offers, and then based on that I will, I will render the invoice. So now we have an invoice um, with all the data pulled together. Well, let's see how. Oh. Oh. Let's see how this looks like. So it's just a LaTeX document, and everything is here and there. And I haven't, I haven't written anything about that. And everything is calculated, and it's just some some lines of code. And. Um, all right, um, let's add another customer. Okay. And um, let's say, okay, it's, let's store the offer number and render this too. And let's say um, we want to change the offer number. So the offer number is, is some, some, some indexed value. And let's change it. And let's try to render it again. And of course, you can't find the, the as, as the, um, the uh, reference to this offer has changed to something, something else, because maybe we had to, to, to change it. And um, yeah, the, the, we can't find it anymore. So we have to find it again. And yeah, now it works. Um, now I will create a query where we want to find um, the um, offers and the offer numbers for each client we have. So just to see what offers are there um, in order to see them at any point in time. So we can say, okay, in the moment we have two offers. Yeah, we have these two, the first one we created. And let's see what I, I created the, the variable as of date before. So when, when I only um, added one offer, um, yeah. and. This is the database at that point, and let's let's uh, let's query the whole history. So we want to see when, at which point, which offer was added. So this is done by um, by joining with the meta entity I mentioned before, this, which is added which with uh, each transaction. So we have here our offer number and the transaction ID, and the trans transaction ID is the entity ID of the meta ID entity, uh, which holds the um, time of the transaction. And then we can see, okay, at this point, I, I added, um, or I changed, or I added these facts to the database. Um, so you can do auditing, and, which is really nice. Um, and also, since um, Datomic supports a, a function that 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 gets the uh, database values since a certain time, we also supported that. So that's the um, the since uh, DB, and there you can see the uh, both the the uh, entities that were uh, were added after after the first date. Um, all right, let's do I have time? Ah, I should be. It's it's really quick. Um, I will show a, a small uh, join of, of two, two databases. Let's say we want to have two, two tasks uh, to, to track our time in the different tasks and create a, a small database for that. And we don't know the, the uh, data model yet. We don't know anything yet. So we can create a, an in-memory database or file database with um, schema on read. So this, you can transact anything. And we don't need a temporal index. And this is done by that. And we are able to join these two different databases um, as we like. And this looks like something like that. So again, here we have the tasks um, that are in the old database. Um, and we connect to the new one. 
and then we just um, transact some efforts for the different tasks so where we worked on and we can of course pull them and we can work with, with this um, uh, this database and um, but we can't use the history anymore because we said okay temporal index is false we don't want that we don't want any history and also okay this is an, an exception uh, as of it's not allowed um, yeah let's let's finish our task and here we are trying to um, get the um, task name we were working on so we have a, a task name and a start date so the task name is one in one database and the um, effort is in another database and we want to join them both. And um, this is done with, um, again, with um, these uh, dollar operators. So we have the uh, current database and the effort database and we use them as inputs and we can say, okay, the first clause is from um, our current database and the both um, other clauses are for the effort database and we can just join that and then we have we have the values we want to have um, and of course you can also um, work with the data after that so here's a, a query um, that gets us um, the start and the end time so between both transactions are 26 seconds it's a fast task um, yeah, and the last thing I want to show you is the um, the retraction. So if you retract entities, if you say, okay, um, this offer here with this number, we want to, uh, to retract that from our current view. Um, we just call the function, the db retract entity function, and then it's not in the current index anymore. There's only one offer left. Yeah, And if we look at the history, it's still there. So it's only from the current view retracted. And if we want to say, if, if, if uh, the GDPR says, okay, clear it out, we say just db purge entity, and then it's gone. Yeah? So the current index doesn't have it anymore, and also the history doesn't have it anymore. So it's really deleted. And um, yeah, I think this, this is it from the coding side. I will go to the next steps. Um, so we are right now working on Java and Scala bindings, so um, you can use it from there. Um, we are working on a st standalone client and server because right now data hike is, is, is pulled into a, your application, so it's only um, lives there. And um, we are trying to build a query planner. So the, right now the query is um, you can't, the, the query itself is, isn't optimized, so potentially if you write a query, it, it could be, it could be um, in the wrong order and it could be very slow. And s since um, the, the query is static, you can analyze it and say, okay, when you have this in that order, you can reorder it to be faster. Um, this is something one, we want to do. Um, the next thing is some identity and access management, um, because we have one partner who wants to have that um, so they want to uh, to have um, some db users and they want to have um, access to certain attributes so that certain users only can query certain attributes or transact search certain attributes and this is not there yet um, and uh, the next part is a little bit um, different so uh, we are planning to add some probabilistic reasoning so any attribute would have some probabilistic values or some entities should, uh, could have some probabilistic values. And um, yeah, um, we have another partner that wants to use a uh, data log for, uh, for the blockchain. So they want to use data log to um, create queries on, on their blockchain system and um, we will support them there. So. Um, this is also something we are working on and of course we want to have now a real website because up until now it's only a github page and some markdowns and maybe a logo i don't know and um yeah thanks uh, thanks to job tech here to have me here and to have me wor uh, work on uh, data hike um i would thank to uh, nikita uh, prokopov for data script 
Ruchigi for closure and atomic, and uh, David Greenberg for uh, the hitchhiker tree. And yeah, I think I'm a little bit over time, but thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, questions. Yes, please. You mentioned crux. Yes. Uh, how does it compare? Um, Crux is a document store, and as I know, it's only schema on read, so you def you don't define a r real schema. But I haven't worked really with it, so I just created a toy project, and um, yeah. And as in comparison, we want to be as 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 decomposable as possible. So we want to have everything. I want to pull everything apart. I want to have the query engine as a separate project. I, have, I want to have um, the, uh, so the, the, the storage as a separate project, and I want to have a really small um, data hack solution with which or a, a small data high core you can work with, and everything else is just a co composition of some libraries. I think the crux approach is very, it, it's my feeling. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's, it's just one big project. Um, but. I don't know. I, I don't know the, the reason behind that. <coughs> yes. Um, uh, as our team are, uh, we are uh, going in the, your, the data, data direction. What, what are your comments on, um, uh, like, um, the the idea of making this uh, in a production system uh, in, in terms of maturity and uh, stability and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, this is uh, the the part for for uh, stability is is of course um, the standalone client and server um, we want to work on. So right now, um, as I said, everything is is in your application and only the storage is some some external layer. So like Postgres or S3 or anything else. And as we want to, so if if this fails, if if your application fails, also data hike fails, and that's a problem. And that's why we want to have a standalone client and a standalone server you can start and run somewhere. And um, yeah. Uh, any plans for a web scale? Like thousands of transactors running on across multiple virtual machines and stuff? At some point, yes. Um, it's not the next step, but yes, it, at some point we want to have something like that. Is that the question of scaling? Or I, I sorry, I didn't catch the beginning. Of yeah, yeah, about uh, the scaling, because that data script uh, initially was designed to, to be run on like an end user machine, so it's yeah. it limits the size of the database to be very small. Yes. And yes. If you want to have something in production and using data hike on server, you might be limited yeah. by the database size. So mm. that's that's what I'm asking for. Yeah. Um, just a, a reflection it, uh, on uh, when you retract uh, yeah. something. You said uh, it was deleted from the. Uh, a uh, mm. uh, uh, EAVT index, index and uh, AV. Yeah. T, uh, yeah. From the from these three indices. Yes. Yes. Does does that mean that his, uh, the historical questions are a bit slower? Yes. They are not indexed or. Yeah. They no no they are indexed. So um we have created these three indexes indices and the same three indices are also temporal oh, indices. Okay. So we That's have why we have yeah oh. we have. In total, we have six indices. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. Oh, I see now what yeah. you said. And the history is, is just a join of, 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 of the six of them. Mm. And the, the normal queries will just go to these three. All right, okay, smart. Yeah, so the history is, of course, slower because of the join. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, yeah. 
but in the future it should be it should be or it will be a separate server and a separate client yeah. Uh, practical question: uh, The triple store uh, of uh, data hike. Yeah. How how compatible would uh, its contents be with the the Tomix triple store? I am we're uh, we're thinking of what's the smartest way of migrating data from the Atomic to. Uh so the um, the core entities are the same. So um, in. The Atomic, you have also entity attribute value yes. and also this this meta entity. So the DB, um, this DB takes instance. So this entity is also in an uh, Atomic. Mm -hmm. So if you um, if you um, export everything from there as 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 um, these entities, you can import it in, in data like. So the, uh, the transaction number is uh, compatible. And, uh, um or would you have need to somehow map the? Mm, it would be yeah, it would be compatible. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you have the matching ID, if you have the the whole entity with with the matching ID, obviously in the in the in, in data hike, um, it would use this ID from from the atomic only as a temporal ID and use and ah. would create an, a new internal one, because. Um, if you think about it, you could have created um, you have you could have created data before that. And just and then import the data from the atomic and yeah the indi indices might clash, so it would use the uh, the the entity ID from the atomic um, as a temporal ID and then use a new one. Mm -hmm. but would it be a problem to make an idempotent importer, so to speak, uh, so you can run it several times? Uh, mm, uh, it would be it would be possible, yeah. Okay. Mm. Would be possible. Yeah. Mm. I have one question. Yes. The values are only primitive values? Um, right now, yes. I can show you how I define them. So they're defined with closure spec. So you describe how the how the data looks like. Um, but you can have more complex types if you if you like to. Um, I, I just show you. Data hype. Um, it's in the schema. So here the current uh, supported um, data types. So you have you have um, integer, boolean, double, float, or Java util date, and they are just um, closure spec definitions of functions. And um, yeah, so right now we are not supporting, as I said, everything from the atomic. So the tuples are think I think missing, and I have somewhere an issue for um, the byte type. Um, yeah, but we are working on that. Another practical question. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please. Uh, I was just wondering if you could expand a little bit more on the next step on the probabilistic reasoning. Was that on the Query engine or yes, both on the transaction and query engine. Yes, um, but the um, yeah, but the the how we do it and, and what concretely we are doing, um, I can't say. So this is this is my partner who's working on that. So um, yeah, so he he wrote the probabilistic programming language. So it's it's his field of expertise, not mine. Yeah. yeah um, as the data log is a subset of Prolog, yes. And uh, I remember my time as Prolog programmer at Ericsson. Oh no. It was yeah. It, you spent a lot of time in a step debugger mm -hmm. to solve uh, terrible situations. <laughs> would, would would it be possible to somehow use uh, or add uh, debugging functionality in the? It's a good question. Um, I think in data log itself, hmm, I th no, I, right now I don't see it right now. Uh, maybe in the future, because I haven't looked into the engine that deeply. I know the, the rough, how he, how he does the matching, how Nikita did it, um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Yes, please. What, what is the perfect use case? 
Oh, that's 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 a good question. Um, so right now, I don't think it's it's a it's a large size um, application. So you can't transact billions billions um, of entities in there. Um, so we tested it for some millions, and it it worked. Um, so I also created a, a performance uh, namespace where I transacted millions of thing and then compared it. And um, of course, in comparison to um, to the highly optimized Atomic, we are not that fast yet. Um, of course, because we are two developers, three, two three developers, and this is Atomic is, is I don't know ten years old now or older. Um, uh, so we're not there yet for this kind of application, but yeah, small to medium sized applications. Yeah, I, I see it. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you.